Hello, Airbus Cockpit Coach here, and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look at the uh, programming of the MCDU, which stands for the uh, Multifunction Control and Display Unit, uh, which is down here on the uh, the forward pedestal. You've got one on each side, one for the captain, one for the first officer. Um, sometimes that's referred to as the MUKDU, and some people even use terminology from other aircraft, such as the uh, the FMS, the Flight Management System. So uh, essentially, it's it's the same thing, but within the Airbus. Um, that's what we call it. Uh, so the MCDU is, is what we're programming today. Um, essentially that builds up the uh, the later, lateral and vertical profile fly, flight and what the aircraft will follow. Um, so we've here in London Luton in the Phoenix A320 we've got a flight sort of imported um, through Simbrief from London Luton to uh, Larnaca in Cyprus and we're going to get that set up now in the box so uh, initially we are in a turnaround state here at the moment um, but we would look at the uh, there's a bit of an acronym we'd use actually for programming the uh, the MCDU so uh, it's diff SRIP which uh, stands for the uh, data page the init A page the flight plan page the secondary page the radnav page the init B page and the performance page so we'd run through in that order um, and they're the, the key pages um, we need to uh, run through in order to set up the MCDU. So we're on the data page here. We'd cross-check the aircraft type is correct, the engine variant, the nav database, and the performance factor, which can be found on the flight plan. And also over here, you, if there are stored pilot waypoints from another flight, so you'll, you'll see that down here, and we would clear those out at this point. Um, after we've done that, so we'd move across to the uh, init A page and there are obviously a couple of ways of doing this we can manually insert everything uh, but I imagine most of you will be pulling your information in from Simbrief and uh, pulling in the the init request button there and, and populate the fields for you from Simbrief um, we, we can obviously build that up ourselves if we needed to and we can put in the the aircraft the airport pairs here so Echo Golf Golf Whiskey to Lima Charlie Lima Kilo for Larnica uh, a company route number if it's applicable, an alternate a flight number and so forth and we can build it up that way ourselves but uh, for simplicity we'll pull that in uh, from Simbrief. Hopefully that works for us. There we go. Um, so yep it's populated with our alternates um, and we can fill in the rest of that information so we're coming up to the flight plan now. We've got our call sign here today EZ87 Lima Yankee and you can see the other relevant information. Uh, we've got our alternate which is correct, we've got the flight number, the cost index, the cruising flight level, the temperature up at that cruising level, proper pause level, zero fuel weight, um, departure runway and standard instrument departure routing and uh, arrival and arrival route there and the runway. Um, so they've got some key information there we need to set things up. So 87 Lima Yankee we can put in to the box Seven Lima Yankee standard easy jet cost center today of four. It was three in nine or zero for the cruise, and let's just cross check that uh, temperature of minus 61. So, wherever we got it, we put in the uh, prediction for better accuracy. Um, taking the temperature there, matching it with the ground there, that's correct. The tropper pause was uh, 38.504. And we'll fill in the winds, wind information. Actually, insert wind profile from our flight plan based on uh, different flight levels. Um, so that's that page in its A page, and there are two sides of this. So if you scroll over, you've got the in it B. And uh, so we'll come back to in it B in a little while. Uh, next, we go over to the flight plan page. And we we'll look at our departure runway, so we'd click on our departure airport here. And we're expecting a departure from 07, and it was, I believe, the match to Charlie down here. The match to Charlie goes in, and we'd insert that. And uh, at this point, um, if you haven't, if you're entering manually after your departure routing, 
you would start entering the waypoints line by line um, for your routes and, and the airways from your flight plan. Um, quite long and tedious, especially on a, a long flight down to Larnaca, you'd, ha you'd have a quite a big list to go through. So uh, for simplicity today, we've pulled in from Simbrief, which I imagine most of you uh, will be doing. But it's very important to cross-check that routing and make sure that's accurate. And that's something we would do normally during the course of uh, setup and briefing. So we'll put in that also uh, our arrival at the other end. Uh, let's see, so our runway, expecting runway 2-2. Bonic one Romeo. Options here. We'll take the Yankee for two two and Bonic would be that one. And we'll insert that. Um, cross check that distance one eight six seven. One eight six nine. So usually uh, with the tolerance of ten nautical miles, we look for. So that's. Excellent, that's the flight plan page uh, set up. Um, next we'd come across to the secondary. We would then copy the active. But we'd put in our engine out procedure here. So um, here at Luton we'd go straight ahead from 07, 25 miles and hold unless we need an immediate return. So um, I would enter Echo Golf Golf Whiskey 07, 074 is the runway heading and 25 miles and I would put that in there I'd also enter a hold for that entering on runway track 074 and then I would also put in our new destination of London Luton should we need to come back that's changing the flight plan obviously from Larnaca back to Luton and then we can put in our arrival for Luton so we'd come straight back in for uh, 07 uh, with no star And you can see that's being built up on the uh, as our routing out and the hold at 25 miles. And then there's the uh, final approach for 07 um, programmed in, and that will populate our ILS and so forth uh, should we need it. So uh, that's in the secondary. Um, at this point, we'll move over to the uh, the RadNav page, and we'll enter you know beacons for our departure or we look at the uh, the standard instrument departure routing anything we need to make reference to in terms of our course um, actually Brookman's Park uh, by Papa Kilo there is relevant so that's one we would use um, so we'd, we'll just make sure that there's, there's nothing else we, we may want to add in there um, and th that may be the case uh, in terms of gaining some situational awareness and so forth so you may want to enter you know a different a different beacon in here um, just to provide some additional situational awareness or there may be a Pacific um, engine out routing which will be off a bearing off a particular beacon we want to make sure that's programmed in here but um, for today um, Brookman's Park uh, is is something we would want programmed in the box so uh, I'll leave it as it is but that's uh, definitely a consideration at that stage so is, is the uh, radio and navigation page And next we'll come uh, over to the init B page and we would enter our zero fuel weight and our block fuel. Now we do have the um, the option of in the Phoenix certainly from your mass and balance page as you can see we are loaded we can just send this information to the uh, MCDU. Um, I imagine that's a function that most of you will uh, use. Sorry. Um, Otherwise, you have just enter those manually. So your zero fuel weight, um, you take down from over here, and uh, your zero fuel weight center of gravity as well. Are the two key ones you need to input, along with your block fuel. So you want to tr cross check your on that one. Let's have a look. Uh, flight plan. So down here, but our plan block of uh, fourteen. 14.9 tons and we'd obviously cross check that fuel as well so it's in so we got that balance across the aircraft and we'd enter that block fuel in there um, but yeah we can use the uh, shortcut function we don't have in the real world unfortunately uh, sending this to the uh, 
the MCDU. So that should come over and it's populated. Um, increased flight levels above the max. Um, so some step climbs in the flight plan there to consider. Um, we just want to cost check things like the uh, alternate time and so forth is correct with the uh, flight plan we've got. So alternate today we've got 2.4 tons and 2.1 in there so yeah, I would make a bit of an alteration on that for now. Just making sure it all matches up and cross checking that so uh, the fuel calculations are correct as we uh, go for our flight. So once we're finished with the um, in its B page something I, uh, I like to also put in uh, is a, a visualization of the uh, engine outs track uh, runway track on our departure so I'll come over to fix info and put in echo golf golf whiskey 07 as our fix and I'll just put in a radial of uh, 074 as well just to give me the uh, the runway track going out as well to fly in the event of uh, an engine out and then I'll move over to the performance page so again there's another area we can use in the uh, electronic flight bag for putting this information across um, so we're making reference now to the departure performance page um, so we've got our runway in there. It's, uh, it's actually was raining a little while ago, so we're, we're wet today. We're lo sinking the load sheet, uh, sinking the weather in. We can enter this information manually. Um, we've got no intersections today for departure, um, so we'd calculate that. And we've got a toga required takeoff today. Gives us all our V speeds, which we can either manually pull across, or again we've got a a nice little shortcut, which again we don't have. Uh, certainly on my aircraft in the real world, which is the, the 320, is this option to send to the uh, MCDU, which we'll do because why wouldn't you? Um, save you a bit of time. And we just want to cross check this information matches up and um, looking at your engine out is correct. Um, sorry, it's about 500 feet above, so 1500 feet, so that's there or thereabouts. Um, thrust, re thrust reduction and acceleration altitudes are correct for your operator or whether you're flying a uh, noise abatement departure one or two you want to consider adjusting those um, up or down or as, as required for your operator so that's the point at which you would uh, obviously reduce thrust and the point at which the altitude at which you would uh, accelerate the aircraft that's height, that's, that's height above the runway um, so there are factors to consider there as well You may also want at this point to consider um, putting in a pre-selected climb speed. Um, sometimes we do do that on departure. Perhaps if I had a early sharp turn, I don't want, and this, we're just on a standard speed restriction of say 250 knots below flight level 100. After takeoff, the aircraft is going to continue accelerating away, and it's quite hard to uh, follow. Know, tight turns and we will sort of push out a bit on turns so I may want to keep um, flying at our clean speed or even our our S speed and keeping the flaps out um, initially until we get past that sort of tight turn for example so um, make a note of your, your um, green dot speed here as well that's important that checks out as well with your uh, uh, calculations and uh, yeah, so you may want to consider. You know, let's say that was a we have got a bit of a tight turn after takeoff. Uh, we may want to uh, consider just keeping the keeping at uh, config one until we get past that turn. So we we could put in our what do you get two o four has slack attraction speed and is would be sensible for that. So uh, we'd come across put two zero four in there. And then we're going to selected mode, and as as the aircraft uh, starts accelerating after takeoff, uh, this box will open up and will display the speed of two zero four in the uh, speed selected window on the uh, FCU. So uh, basically, now at this point, we are um, set up for departure. Um, 
generally we'd have the performance page over here and uh, a flight plan page over there for departure. Uh, so that's that is our uh, config. So as I said, we run through uh, the various stages there in the uh, diff strip um, order. Um, so yeah, something to uh, have a play with. Make sure you've got that fully populated. Um, just don't forget to, to cross-check as you go, and you want to be cross-checking that routing, for example, which we haven't run through today, but you would have your flight plan up over here, and we would be running through that, making sure that all these points match up, and, and the bearings, and there's obviously the departure routes and arrival routes and so forth, and uh, that's all looking logical in the box, and we'd also go to the plan page, we we'll go to the flight plan page and um, up to a decent range and you can skip through your flight plan and you can make sure that looks logical as well. You haven't got a line that sort of skews off the other side of the world somewhere. Um, so yeah, just quick check that that looks sensible in terms of uh, the order and the direction you're going. Oh, that's uh, that's the uh, MCDU setup. Any questions on that? Uh, drop me a note in chat. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and look out for more content as it comes through. Thanks very much for watching.